Welcome to Modding Fallout New Vegas Part 7. Now for this tutorial we're going to be focusing on how to improve performance on a heavily modded game. I would like to give one quick caveat very early on. Every system is different and not every system responds the same way to the same techniques and the same mods. So the things I'm going to show you, they improve my performance dramatically. Um, and I hope they can help you. But just be warned, there's no guarantee. So, what am I talking about when I say performance? Well, I'm talking about four different things. The first thing I'm talking about is frames per second. That's the most obvious indicator of performance. Uh, the more frames per second you get, the smoother the game feels, the more realistic it feels. Um, if you're curious as to how many frames per second you're getting, you can download Fraps at Fraps.com and it's a free tool which will tell you as you're playing what your frame rate is. Um, the second thing I'm talking about is stability. Uh, it's no point having 120 frames per second if your game crashes every five minutes. Um, so we're going to try and keep the crashes down to a minimum. In fact, we're actually going to try and eliminate them. The third thing is stutter. Now this is where the entire game seems to sort of stop very briefly, maybe for half a second, um, as you're traveling around the wasteland. And this is usually because it's loading textures, models, etc. And in a heavily modded game, you're loading more of them. Uh, and then the fourth thing is something I tend to call micro stutter. It's been around since Oblivion and it's called the 64 Hertz book. I believe it's caused by the game updating at a different frequency to the graphics card. Uh, not totally sure. But the net effect is whenever you're moving, especially sideways, there's a slight jerkiness to the game. Now, not everyone is sensitive to this and not every system shows it as much as another. But we're going to try and remove this for those of you who are annoyed by it. So, to improve performance, we've got quite a lot of options. Uh, the most obvious one is to download a performance enhancing mod. Now, I don't actually use any. Um, they, none of them actually helped me out. However, you can try them out. Just make sure you install them using Fallout Mod Manager. So, if, if you want to uninstall them, you uninstall uh, cleanly. Um, there's also tweak guides. Um, if you go to tweakguides.com, there is a Fallout 3 tweak guide, which is brilliant. That covers almost everything about settings, changing your ini file, etc. It gives you loads of really cool tips on enhancing the multi-threading of the game, because the game's multi-threading comes... Um, it's not optimally set up. Uh, now, for me, again, my computer is pretty powerful, and this guide, although it helps a little bit, I can get 4 or 5% performance improvement. It's not a huge change. But um, I know if you've got a mid-level machine, these sort of guides can really help a lot. But that's not what I'm going to be focusing on for this tutorial. Now, the first thing we are going to focus on is making our game use more memory. Now... Uh, the game by default only uses 2 gigabytes of memory, which is nowhere near close to what most people have. So if we can get the game using more memory, the performance will go up, stutters will come down. And we're going to do that using a program called the 4 Gigabyte Enabler. This program can be downloaded from Nexus um, as normal uh, and will work for any machine not set up to use NVSE, but seeing as I'm going to assume most of you are using NVSE for a heavily modded game, you need to go to a different site, and that is to the nvse.silverlock.org site where you downloaded NVSE in the first place. There they have an alternative version of the 4 gigabyte enabler. That is the one you need. Okay, so open the downloaded file, and we are also going to need to open our game folder. That is the folder where your Fallout NV.exe file is found, where you run the game from. And we're going to copy across two files, fnv4gb.exe and fnv4gbhelper.dll. 
going to copy those across into our game folder. Now you can actually run them from anywhere, but there is a reason we're going to run them from the game folder, and I'll explain that later on. And that is actually it. The 4GB enabler is installed. You now can run the game from the fnv4gb.exe file, and it will run the game for you uh, with a lot more memory. And it actually also runs um, NVSE if you have that installed. So don't worry, it still runs the game with the script extender. OK, so now you've got your game using a lot more memory. Um, and hopefully you'll notice a reduction in stutters if you were being plagued by those. You'll also notice if you were um, if you were suffering from the 64 hertz bug, the micro stutter as I call it, you should notice that has disappeared as well. There is a downside to this program, I'm afraid, and that is for some systems, for some people, um, you will get when you sleep or have a conversation with someone, when you finish sleeping or finish the conversation, you suddenly get a massive drop in performance and the only way to fix it is save your game, quit and reload. That is really annoying. However, there is a way to fix that as well. And that brings us to the next mod. Uh, the next mod I'm going to show you to install um, is going to let us run the game in windowed mode without having to see an ugly window. So what is windowed mode? Well, basically it's exactly as it sounds. You play the game inside a standard window. Uh, it means you can see the window while you play. Um, and it's very easy to do. You simply click on the options, select windowed, make sure the resolution doesn't get changed as you notice it did there. Uh, click OK and hit play and you'll be playing in windowed mode. Now one thing that surprises most people is to find out that Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas often run a lot smoother and a lot better in windowed mode. They run faster and more importantly they crash a lot less. In fact since I've been running windowed mode I have had zero crashes zero crashes, not a single one. And I get about, I don't know, say about 30% improvement in frame rate. Now I suspect that's because I'm running a multi-GPU system. Um, let me just quit this. I suspect it's because I'm running a multi-GPU system and the game doesn't handle that very well. I'm running a Radeon 5970. Um, obviously the big downside to playing in windowed mode is it's in a window, which is very, very distracting. But we are going to get rid of that. And we're going to do that with a program called Fake Full Screen Windowed Mode. Uh, now, this program, you can download from the link given, um, is a really, really small, simple program um, that basically takes the windowed mode game and fakes full screen. It hides the border, so you feel like you're playing full screen mode. Now the author of this program has made a second program that does something similar and has a few advanced features and he recommends using that. But it's a little bit more complicated and actually for our needs I find this program to be perfect. So I still use this one. Uh, and it comes as an archive and it has one file in it called falloutfullscreen.exe. That file needs to be extracted into your game folder. Now you'll also notice I've made a shortcut for it. Um, that's so I can start the game from this program every time because from now on that is how you need to start the game. If I actually open up the Fallout New Vegas launcher, that's the way you would normally have opened it before you modded. Just make sure it's in windowed mode by clicking the windowed checkbox, OK. But don't run the game do not run the game from this launcher. Just make sure it's in windowed mode. And now run the game from the Fallout full screen.exe. Now, this program, when you run it, will actually detect that you've installed the 4GB enabler. 
and it will also detect NVSE and run that if needed. And that's why we place the 4 gigabyte um, enabler in this folder. And you'll see it opens up in a window mode, in a window, just as before. But after a few seconds, suddenly the window grows a little bit, expands, and the border disappears. And now we're in full screen mode. Now, even though it looks just like full screen mode, it isn't. It's, it's actually windowed mode. You can alt tab. Uh, you should get no crashes anymore. You should get a lot more stability. And if your system's like mine, you'll get improved performance. So what's the downside? Uh, well, there is one. The brightness in the options makes no difference to the brightness in game. None. Even though you probably saw it going up and down because the program that's recording is detecting it, I can't actually see anything in game, I can see no difference. But that's not the end of the world because if you follow these tutorials and installed the Imaginator uh, from the, I believe it was the fourth tutorial, as you can see as I'm doing now, I'm using the hotkeys to improve, increase the brightness in game. So for me, not a problem whatsoever. Uh, and I can also use the director's chair open up the in-game menu and change the light settings as you can see. If you remember I mentioned an alternative full screen program by the same author that program actually gives you the option to change the gamma settings in-game uh, but it's very simplistic changes and um, it's, it's too bright for me so I prefer to do it this way and like I said, this, this program for me is perfect. I'm playing in full screen mode now. I can set the brightness with Imaginator. I can Alt Tab. My performance is massively improved. And as you can see, the game looks great. You'd never know you were in windowed mode. So we've got a game that's uh, performing better, hopefully, and a lot more stable. Uh, but I'd like to cover another uh, point that's not exactly about performance, but was more due to stability, and that is the autosave and quick save functionality. Um, I mean, I use a lot of quick save in these sort of games, and quick save and autosave are both a little bit buggy in New Vegas and Fallout 3. Um, so one of the big recommendations is that you turn off autosaving. Um, you can do that from your options menu and um, go to settings, gameplay and you have save on rest, save on wait, save on travel etc. Make sure they are off so that it, the game itself never auto saves. And obviously if you, if you don't want to constantly have to save manually all the time you would like some other method to quick save and to auto save. Uh, and that brings up a great mod called CASM. I don't know if you noticed in the top left corner, you had a message saying it was saving. This mod basically auto saves uh, every few minutes to a different save, not to something called auto save, but to a new save uh, with a profile name. So if you can see here when I try and load games, there's lots of games that have been automatically saved for me. It saves them in sequence. The, true is, the same is also true with quick save. Uh, this mod allows you to quick save by pressing the F4 key and it saves a new quick save to a new slot rather than overwriting the old one. Now the mod is called Kips Kiss Auto Save Manager. I hope I said that right. Um, and you can download it from Nexus at the link given. Now we're going to create a foam mod from this even though it's such a tiny mod. Uh, and we're going to do this straight from the archive rather than extracting it to a folder. Uh, now, someone actually asked me why I didn't do this normally in a previous tutorial. Um, and the simple answer is sometimes in Fallout Mod Manager, doing this causes Fallout Mod Manager to crash for me. But apparently not for everyone, so I'm going to show you. Uh, and if it works for you, as it sometimes works for me as well, uh, it's so much faster. So, instead of extracting the archive to a folder, you're going to leave the archive you've just downloaded as, uh, I think it's a 7z file, and instead of creating from folder, we're going to basically just select Add Foam Mod in our package manager. Select the archive, and that's it. <laughs> it's, uh, it asks if you would like to make a copy. I always do, because I like to delete the original 
which is on my um, desktop. And then I just activate the mod as normal. And it's that simple. Okay, and that's it for this tutorial. I, I hope your game is now performing better and a lot more stable. Uh, the next tutorial, I think, is going to be the last in this series and is going to delve into what to do when things go wrong. Hope to see you there.